So one of my subscribers, Bob, asked, how do we prevent things like carpal tunnel or tendonitis or even arthritis happening in our hands because that can really affect our saxophone playing? Well, that's what this video is about. Hi, I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to bring your saxophone playing up to the next level. Now, in this video, I'm not here to prescribe. So here's my disclaimer. I'm not prescribing. I'm not... Um, your doctor, so I can't say that the stuff I'm going to show you is absolutely going to work, but I will tell you my own personal experience and how some of these exercises I'm showing you will maybe help you as they've helped me, okay? But nothing will beat doing your own research and consulting your own doctor. All right, so Bob's question was about prevention. You know, the best thing that we can do as musicians is to have a good foundation, okay? Good posture, good breathing, okay? Um, a good foundation so we get the best tone that we possibly can because what a lot of folks don't realize is that posture has a huge huge factor it is a huge factor for your tone and it's also a huge factor for your hand health and uh, other types of things that may happen I talk a lot about posture in my get a killer saxophone tone course which I'll put a link in the show notes and I also talk about this with my students as well so this video also can be for any type of musician, whether it's saxophone, trumpet, um, string instrument players, piano, all that kind of stuff. You see, the thing is that carpal tunnel, tendonitis, those tend to result usually from overuse injuries, all right? So repetitive hand motions. So when you're playing, in particular, woodwind instruments or especially string instruments and your hands are in a certain position for a long period of time, you know, there may be the tendency later on to develop these types of things, and hopefully that won't happen to you. Um, now for myself, it has happened numerous times throughout my career, and right now I'm going through a little bit of uh, a combination of, well actually all three, uh, the arthritis in the left thumb, but I've had that for a year or two now, but also the carpal tunnel and the tendonitis in my right wrist. So I got the trifecta. All right, so I can tell you from experience that uh, this is not fun. <laughs> it can be kind of painful. And, you know, um, prevention is the, is the key. Now, even though I've done preventive exercises, other things can cause these types of things to happen. So we have repetitive hand use, okay, overuse injuries. Well, also, I've been on the keyboard a lot, on the computer keyboard a lot, editing videos for you guys and uh, creating courses and all that kind of stuff. And hand position can get sloppy over times, okay? And when it gets sloppy, that's when the problems happen. And that is what really did it for me <laughs> this time. So uh, poor posture, poor hand and wrist position. When you're dealing with saxophone, again, it's not the neck strap doesn't just hold up the horn, okay? It's the leverage between your thumbs. So that's why you always see me wearing the Van Doren FNH100 harness, okay? This gets all the weight of the horn off my neck. Now, I wanted to mention another thing too while I'm talking about the neck. A lot of folks complain about having neck problems. I know for me, when I was using regular neck straps, I was getting lumps in the back of my neck and even headaches at some point. Um, and that's when one of my student teachers told me about this harness and I tried it and I was sold on it. Now, there's also other harnesses out there, like the Balam harness and many others, so definitely give them a shot, try them out. Um, the important thing to consider is that there's a lot of nerves in your neck, and the median nerve that runs from your neck all the way down your arm, it's one of the main nerves in your arm, originates from the neck. So if you have an impingement here, that may be the cause for any problems over here, okay? Now, uh, before I go on with, with typical types of treatments, I want to mention a couple of things that I've pursued. Um, if you have a good acupuncturist, that person can help alleviate some of the uh, pressure, some of the uh, impingement, as long as uh, they're a good acupuncturist. I had recently, I've gone to acupuncturists for a long time for a variety of things, and I went to some really great folks in New York where you'd never felt the needles. In California, um, I went to a highly regarded acupuncturist, and after the first session, things were getting a lot better uh, with the tendonitis in the carpal tunnel. But then um, I went back for a second and third treatment, and I noticed he was like digging in really hard with those needles, and something was wrong, and I should have went with my gut, and I should have said something. I did. I said, ow, this is hurting, you know, and he's like, well, no, we got to get in there. 
and I should have just stopped it right there. Um, it didn't cause damage or anything, but it certainly did not help. So if you're looking for an acupuncturist, make sure you do your research, talk to people, um, consult associations. And for some folks, you may be lucky enough, it may be covered in your uh, health insurance. All right, so just an added bonus there. But acupuncturists can certainly help with these types of symptoms. And again, it's a recommendation. I'm not, you know, I'm not your doctor. So check into that as a possibility. Another recommendation is to go to a sports massage therapist. I'm saying sports massage because they deal with athletes that really, you know, um, put their body through a tremendous stress and pressure and all that kind of stuff. And uh, lucky for me, I've had access to really great sports massage therapists who have helped me over the years prevent any kinds of problems going on. So um, that's something else that I would definitely recommend for you. Okay, now let's say you want to just prevent these things from happening. You've got to keep your wrists very flexible, very, very limber. You need to make sure you have good posture, okay? Whether you're at the computer, at a piano, whatever instrument you're playing, you've got to have really good posture. Don't slump, don't get lazy. When you get lazy, you're going to pay for it later on, all right? So you don't want to do that. Another preventive measure is to make sure that your wrists are not locked into a particular position for a very long period of time. Move your hands around, okay? Move them around in circles. Do light stretching. I'm gonna show you some stretching exercises that I found helpful for me. Now, uh, what I'm gonna say is that there may be stretches that I recommend that may not work for you. Do some research on your own, okay? But keep your wrists very flexible, move them around. Don't stay stuck in one position, all right? So that's a good preventive measure. And if you're practicing, and uh, those of you that know me, uh, I have my certain rules, my rule of tens, and that is in regard to how you practice and how you approach things. You may want to check that out on my website. Okay, so now let me get into some of the things that you would do if you start to feel numbing, numbing or uh, tingling in your thumb or in your two or three, your index, middle, or even your ring finger. That could be either tendonitis or it could be carpal tunnel. Now, um, if it's, here's what I've been told by doctors, and my sister's a doctor, so she said this to me too. If it's on the top, more than likely it's probably tendonitis, the pain. If it's on the bottom, more than likely it's carpal tunnel. Again, I would go to an orthopedist and have that checked, all right? So they'll, they're going to say to you at first, put ice on. As soon as you start to feel that stuff, put ice on, okay? You want to you wanna get rid of that swelling. They'll also probably recommend to you to take some kind of ibuprofen or something that's going to alleviate the swelling, okay? There's also natural supplements out there that you could look into as well if you don't want to take anything like Advil, okay, or ibuprofen. So those are going to be the first things that I'm going to say in terms of treating it at first. The other things that you can do, and let me get my accoutrements here, uh, one of the, the most basic things that you probably should do, especially if it's tendonitis, because with tendonitis, um, it's a longer period of time for it to heal, all right? It could take up to six months or longer, and you want to try to immobilize that wrist as much as possible. Now, for folks like me who perform a lot, um, this is my livelihood, so I have to find a way around that um, because I need to play. Okay, but you know, for, for most people, if you can get away with immobilizing your wrist, that's great. You can use braces or splints, okay? You can go to uh, you know, physical therapist or occupational therapist and they could make hand splints for you if needed, if it's that bad. But these splints you can get in your local drugstore, uh, really simple. These work with either hand, okay? And basically you just put your hand in and then you just tighten it as needed, okay? Just get the right splint for uh, the size of your hand. And I found for me that um, this is good to wear at night and anytime I'm not playing, okay? It's just really been helpful because you wanna keep your wrist in one position. At nighttime, we, some of us maybe tend to do this or tweak our wrists or something like that and that may make the situation worse, okay? So this is a good, um, this is a good helping or aid, I should say, these types of braces, okay? And you know, it doesn't matter the brand. Um, you could do some research on that if you need to. The next thing I would recommend is um, this type of brace. Now, this is interesting. This is made by Niken. It's actually a magnetic type of brace. Uh, let me take this off for a second so I could show you on this arm. This brace, by itself, it, ha it has like magnetic properties. Now, this is kind of old, um, but I'll wear this if I'm going through some pain 
tendonitis pain in particular, um, I'll also put a magnet in there at the pain source. And I found for me the Niken magnets are really effective for getting rid of pain. I've used magnets on my back when I've had sciatica, and I gotta tell you, even now if I start to feel a twinge, I'll just put the back magnet on and it's gone within a few hours. Again, that's me, all right? I'm not saying that that's gonna work for you, I'm just telling you it works for me. Sometimes we have to speak to people, see what works for them and try it out ourselves, okay? Um, but at times I've used this, um, especially in the colder weather too. This tends to help, it keeps, keeps the area warm and I could stick a magnet in there and that would help. The other thing, and this is more for arthritis. Now those of you folks that follow Harvey Patel have noticed at times that he's had some kind of brace over by both of his thumbs. For saxophone players, this tends to happen a lot as we tend to toggle our thumb from the, um, the uh, it's not even a thumb rest really, but from the rest to the octave key. And extensive use of that can, again, overuse injury, that can cause some problems there. Um, in my situation with the arthritis, mine is due to the fact that I've got this bone sticking out and I've always had issues with this thumb and it just was a matter of time. In fact, what happened with me, this is so frustrating, uh, what was this, three, four years ago, it was in the summertime, I jammed my thumb and, and it was like the worst thing, I jammed my thumb and then like the same day or a couple days later, I hyperextended my right elbow and my insurance would only cover fixing one thing at a time. I had to make a Sophie's choice, which was really, really frustrating. I actually, I went with the right elbow because I was, that was really incredibly painful and I was, thought to myself this would go away quickly. Well, I, I got help for this. I, I really should have gotten help for this too because uh, it never really healed after that. Um, and through genetic factors and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's when arthritis set in. Does it stop me from playing? No, no, absolutely not. But um, the important thing is that I met a, a, have a good orthopedist out here and there's a hand person, a hand therapist, where she specializes in making these types of splints and braces and stuff like that. And she's just really good. She knows what she's talking about. And this is very similar to the one that you see on Harvey Patel. Just really simple. I just put this around my thumb. Now for me, she made this so I can play. But the only thing is that um, I can play. It does not get in the way of the palm keys. Um, but I find that I don't need it so much when I play. If I'm going through, uh, if I'm experiencing a little bit more pain than normal with my thumb, I do a certain type of exercise to help uh, strengthen it so that, you know, it's not, I'm never gonna get rid of the arthritis, but I'll, I'll keep strengthening that so I don't feel so much pain so often. You could probably find something like this. I'm pretty sure Harvey sells this on his website. So just go to Harvey Patel's website and you should be able to see something like that there. Okay, so those are the braces. Um, I talked about the ice. Now I wanna talk about stretches. And uh, these are preventive in nature, but also these are good from when you're first starting to experience some of these symptoms. You're gonna go through certain pain when you're, when you're doing these stretches. It's really gonna push you, but um, you need that flexibility in your wrists and also in your thumbs. So for arthritis, the one exercise that I found from my hand therapist and also a physical therapist was this. Uh, let's see if we can get this. Okay, so I have my thumb bent like this. This part of my thumb tends to be very weak. So this is from my particular situation and those folks that have a problem with this joint over here. And it's, it's actually a lot of people, to be honest with you. So I wanna make this stronger. So what I wanna do is I wanna lead with the muscle that's underneath here, not lead with my, the bone over here or even the tip of my finger. So I'm gonna just place a little bit, just gonna place my finger over here and I'm gonna lead with this muscle so that I press against my, my finger. Now this looks like there's no tension whatsoever or this looks very easy. For someone who has extreme pain or arthritis, this is, this is painful, this is not easy to do. Um, so I tend to do this at various points of the day and I'll hold it for you know 30 seconds or so and then I'll rest and I'll do it again. Uh, I've used this with rubber bands also to add more tension and to build up the strength over here. So that's, again, a suggested exercise if you're dealing with that same joint kind of issue um, that I have. Now, in terms of, I'll deal with carpal tunnel first, okay? Again, preventative stuff. And I've learned this stuff, um, believe it or not, online from a drummer, all right? And I felt that his exercises seem to be helping me the most now. Are, there, are these the be-all and end-all of exercises for carpal tunnel and tendonitis? No, 
Okay, there's plenty of things out there, but again, consult your orthopedist or your doctor. All right, so the first one, and I'm gonna face to the side. I'm gonna put my arms forward, I'm gonna face my palms down, and I'm gonna make two stop signs. And what I'm thinking about is that my hand is against the wall, and I'm leading with my wrist. So I'm like pushing out from my wrist. That's what I'm thinking over there. And I'm gonna hold this for a good 20 to 30 seconds. All right, again, we're stretching. We're stretching the muscles in the wrist. The next one is gonna be the palms down. The thumbs are not tucked, they're out. I'm gonna make a fist and I'm just gonna hold it just like this so that this is straight. Now, so far, this, this doesn't, um, for me, this doesn't hurt at all, but for some folks, this may be painful. I'd hold that for 20 seconds as well, 20 to 30 seconds, I should say. The next one is I keep the same position, but now I'm gonna bring my knuckles down as if I'm knocking on a door over here. And I'm gonna bring it to the point where I start to feel tension or pain. Not too much pain, but just enough so I get a stretch. And I can tell you that uh, since I started doing these exercises, when I first started, I can only go this far. And now I'm down to about here. And that's only within the last, I don't know, maybe a week. All right, so this, this for me has been really effective. And you're gonna feel this here on the top, okay? So that's uh, some of the stuff for carpal tunnel that's helped me. For tendonitis, I'm gonna again show you from this, this angle. So I'm gonna have my arms out, my thumbs are going to be tucked in. I'm gonna make a fist, but my pinky is gonna be down, okay? And I'm gonna lead with my pinky going down and I'm gonna be stretching out this tendon on the thumb side. Now this one can be tricky, okay? And I'm looking to go as far down as I can, but once I start experiencing extreme pain, I'm gonna stop at that point, bring it up just a pinch. And this one, I, I uh, man, being this far, I, I couldn't do it before, but I, I'm definitely feeling it. And again, another 30 seconds or so on this. Okay, the next one, and I'll show with my, uh, I guess I'll show with my right hand. All right, so my hand is out. I'm gonna bring my wrist, I'm gonna move from my wrist, bring my hand in this way, bring it one more time. So now I'm gonna think of my fingers coming back to my face. I'm going to allow my other hand to assist and bring that stretch. I'm feeling this across the top of my hand right now. And like I mentioned earlier, from what I've been told by doctors, the tendonitis, you tend to feel it on the top. And now I'm feeling that, that stretch really taking effect. So here, 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 and then here. Okay, and you're holding it for 30 seconds. The last one uh, you wanna do against a wall. I don't have a wall right here, but basically your hand is up against the wall and with your other hand, you're gonna come over the top and you're going to basically lift your thumb. You're gonna keep your thumb against the wall, but lift it against the wall. So I'm gonna show you on a music stand. That's another purpose for a music stand as well. Let me get this in the picture here and we wanna make this flat, flat as possible. Okay, so hand against the wall or the stand. And even just this alone, you're gonna feel it right over here. Okay, you're gonna feel it actually along the back. But now when I start to bring my thumb up, you're gonna to start to stretch the thumb tendon. Make sure you keep your, the rest of your hand against the wall. Okay, and again, all these stretches you wanna hold for 20 to 30 seconds. All right, so again, disclaimer, these are things that have helped me. They may not help you, all right? Uh, you should definitely consult the doctor, um, do your research, and your research on Google, whatever you need to do. But as musicians, we wanna have our hands in the best possible shape as possible. So we wanna prevent carpal tunnel and tendonitis from happening. Arthritis you can't really prevent, but if you make your hands as strong as possible and not keep your, your hands or your wrists locked in a certain position for a long period of time, that's only gonna benefit you, um, benefit you and your playing in the end. Okay, I hope this video has helped you. Go to DonnaSchwartzMusic.com to get updates and to get videos that will help you get that full rich tone you've been looking for and to bring your playing up to the next level. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great day.